I know it's late, but today I'm going to take a look at the DxO Photo Lab 7 with the latest update, which I think it's the 7.7. It's been a while that it got out, but I recently had some time to test it, so I saw that I should make a video about it. Uh, so I just installed it yesterday. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it on and do the setup so that I can show you from the scratch, even for myself, to see whether this software is easy to use. So I'm trying the trial version, obviously, and then if it's good, I'm going to buy it. So we're going to do that together. So idea is that in a software, what I want is generally the simplicity. A software can be fantastic. You know, for instance, uh, if you are aware of the software called Blender, which is like a 3D animation software, it's extraordinary, but it is extra complex too. You really need to know how to use it. You need to know your color mathematics. You need to know your color sciences, uh, programming a little bit, you know, all that stuff. My point is that, you know, when generally we are doing a photography, whether it's for hobby or for pro professional purpose, you know, time is money. You know, these days, times are very precious and we are all going to die soon anyway. So, you know, generally, ideally, it would be better to uh, have something that easy to use. At least when you look at it, you should know how uh, you can get around and then find your tools. Now, Immediately, it's showing me the advertisement for the new Nick Collection 7, which I'm going to try it out later. I'm going to close it. And before I do that, I have some photos that I'm really curious to test out with very high resolution. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open a new folder and name it Test Image. I'm doing it on the desktop anyway for the sake of this tutorial, but generally I'm pretty organized. My wife don't agree with it, but it's true. And then I'm going to, and interestingly, I have like a very first uh, Olympus EM5 Mark I. The, 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 uh, my daughter, I'm not going to show her images. I'm just going to test out all that control X and then V so what I was going to say that the the very first Olympus EM5 Mark I with the kit lens 12 to 50. So you can clearly understand that this is probably the the oldest camera in any level, uh, especially for a micro four third. Um, when it comes to low light, the results are not the best. I'm going to show you right now. Just a quick, quick, uh, you know, example. Uh, I'm going to name it anyway, just because that is very important to sh understand which image is in which ISO. For instance, this one is the base ISO of 100. So I'm going to name it ISO, actually 200. I think the base Olympus is 200. This one, I think is 1600. I'm going to double check anyway. I'm going to right click, properties, details. Uh, oh, it seems to me that's also ISO 200. Oh, I know why I, I have two of them because this one is blur. So I took a second image. So I'm going to delete it and I'm going to clean, keep a clean image. So rename ISO 200. Then this is the 1600. ISO, if I remember, and just to give you an idea, 1600 ISO in a very first model of Olympus EM5, 
generally in full frame, it's about 3200. You know, when I say full frame, I'm talking about the old full frame images. Uh, for example, Canon 5D, literally speaking, which is uh, not the best ISO level anyway, even at 1600. Now, just to go crazy, I took an image, I believe, at 12,800. Just to give you an idea, guys. Again, I repeat, this is an old camera, Micro Four Third, where I pushed the ISO like an idiot. Let's say you don't care about the image quality anymore. You just need the image. That's it. No question asked. This is where things get crazy. And finally, obviously, I mean, you know, otherwise it's not funny. I took the final image at 25,600. 25,600 on a micro for third, very old camera. My gracious God. I so 256. Did I, did, I, did I write it correctly? Uh, double check. You know, you can skip the part and go straight to the and go straight to the editing part, but you know, this is important because you know, everything takes time. So we created a folder with same image in four different ISO on a very old camera to test out one of the most powerful part of the DxO photo lab, which is obviously the lens correction and uh, without a doubt, the, um, the noise cancellation. Now, straight up the bat, this is the screen that you have. And then you have the obvious folders. You can navigate directly from there, which is fantastic. So you don't need to do anything else. For example, my test image folder is right there on the left hand side at the very bottom. You can click it and they're probably going to show you all the images there. I mean, Seriously, uh, cannot go wrong. All I need is though, uh, to make sure that I have some more room. Um, so that's 200, 12,800 to 25,600 and 1,600. I'm going to give you a side-by-side -side comparison, which is going to be, no, this one, but this one. So I'm going to open this image on Fast Tone because Fast Tone will allow you to show you images uh, four at once. For instance, I'm going to going to select all image with the Control A, then I'm going to zoom in. Pay attention to the ISO. So ISO 200, 1600, where is it? 1600, 2000, 12,800, 25,600. So you can clearly see the quality. And by the way, the sharpness, don't worry about it because the lens is not very sharpened up already. That's fine, fine by me. Generally, you can add sharpness later. But, um, and also I reduce the lens sharpness in the camera, which doesn't really matter for the raw images anyway. So it just doesn't really matter. Um, but when it comes to ISO, you can see that uh, <laughs> it's pretty crazy, huh? Right. I'm going to do, uh, next video will be the side-by-side -side ISO comparison. This video is the, uh, the first look. Right, now um, the navigation is pretty straightforward. You can go to your folder directly by clicking it. That's it, no question asked. And then on the top, you have the file. You can open a new project. Uh, you have the database, so you can create a backup just in case. All your metadata for an image. You can write to image so that you can create your own metadata. Or you can just directly write down there on the right hand side. You see, uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty awesome, actually. 
when necessary, you have the option. Now, optics module, just to make sure that I have the right one, you have the, this is my old camera, so you can clearly see that I used old ones, Canon 70D, Fuji X-T20, then I had the GoPro. I already have the my Olympus, which is fantastic as well. Um, install new module. Do I need it? I'm going to click it just to check exactly if I need. As a matter of fact, I don't. So that's fine. You have the view. You can change your view in whatever way you prefer. So this is the um, image selection view, the photo library. You have the separate one here. Then you can go to the customize to do your editing. Now, question is that, um, do I understand anything just by looking at it? I do actually, because in the left-hand side, you have the straightforward zooming in, zooming out, and you can actually navigate by moving around the square box. You have the necessary metadata. Then GPS coordination, if it's necessary, then you have the advanced history. Every time you do uh, edit, it will show on here. Followed by on the top, you have the compare. You know, you're going to compare after you do your edit, obviously. Now, I'm sincerely curious about how sharp this photo can be made because this photo is clearly not very sharp at all. You know, I'm not very a sharp um, slut. However, I prefer my photo at least a minimum level of sharpness. So before I'm heading on, on the top of it, what I like to do is to go to the lens part, see if there is any softness correction. There you go. So if I click it, it will show you all the necessary information. A cheap, incredible sharpness and details that push the limits even of the, even the best performing lenses on the market. <laughs> My one is opposite. It's not the best performing at all. So I'm good at that department. So if I turn it off, it doesn't show much of a thing. Um, so if I push it all the way, and then I turn off. Nah, not much. I think um, it's a blur came from moving hand because if you look at the shutter speed, shutter speed is at 0 0.5 second. Guys, you know that it's almost close to impossible to achieve sharpness at that speed. It just, it's just not possible. My, my hand moved. Considering that, it's a very fantastic image. But if I turn on unsharp mask, probably I can get some more sharpness. So if I turn off and turn on, now it looks good. Now, my brain has started to work differently, which means that because I've been staring at this image for a while, so it started to look sharp in my eyes, which means I don't have fresh eyes anymore. Right, now going back to the uh, how the overall things look like. So if I go back to the photo library, you can pick up your photos and you can click in each one. You can start to, you can start to work right away and you can do your necessary edits there. You can probably right click there and then you can see that you can rename most likely, exactly, rename and copy and paste, all these obvious things that you probably are used to. Then you have the DxO optics module. Again, if you're used to DxO, you should be able to know exactly what is that. And for the sake of it, to be honest, what I like to do though, is to uh, use 25,600 uh, ISO photo, and see how sharp this thing can be after the noise reduction. So let's go to the D prime XD. Wait for a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Now, you can see that you really don't necessarily see much, uh, see much, to be honest, in the global photo. But to see the result, you need to zoom in quite a bit. Now, if I turn off, that's the real image. That looks bloody ugly though. My goodness, my eyes hurt. And that's the real image after the noise reduction. So it's pretty ugly, even after the noise reduction, you know, microphone that cannot do much to be honest, to say, which is a shame. You know, otherwise I would buy, I, I could constantly buy um, cheap cameras and then keep using it. But there's an old saying, garbage in, garbage out. So your technology can do much. So if you push the maximum ISO, the DxO uh, PhotoLab 7 with the latest technology, you know, can help you just a little bit, but not that much because you can still see grain anyway, you know, come on. I mean, we all know that this is just unacceptable. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to go to the Deep Prime, the old technology, see what it does. So that's the old Deep Prime. That's the newest Deep Prime. Again, the old one. And the new one, I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. I'll go back to the old, to the new. Essentially, it doesn't do much. How about the classic Prime? But I don't, I don't know if you can see anything, but I don't see much. So that's the original version. And that's the prime. I'm clicking to deep prime. Not much. Deep prime XD. Not much. Or probably I'm just mis misunderstanding. It's most likely in this little screen uh, where you probably get to see some of it. If I f do force detail, what does it happen? If I, I'm gonna wait a little bit. If I push the force detail, it doesn't do much. Again, if I do again, not much either. Probably I'll kick auto. Just for the sake of comparing, I'm going to just do the noise reduction in this one. And then, and then, and then, and then, uh, everything else I'm going to keep as it is. And I'm going to export it as DxO Prime XD. The lens correction, I'm not sure. Do I need to do any kind of lens correction? Distortion is fine as well. Watermarks, text, enter text. So ISO 25600 DxO D prime XD. And I'm going to put it in the middle of the image, probably. And probably it's a little bit too 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 big. So I like to move it up a little bit. There you go, perfect. Now I'm going to just export it. Now for the export, what do I do? Has to be somewhere. So I'm going to get rid of this thing. And in order to export, I should have export button literally ready somewhere. Where is it? But I don't really see anything. I don't know if you can see anything at all. 
Tell me why nothing gonna turn. Now, there is a lot of long pause, right? I know, I know it's awkward because I'm thinking too, because this is the first look. So when you get the EXO, the, in the first look, apart from the color editing or, any, uh, or something else, the first thing we all know that we want to see is the noise reduction capability and the lens correction, obviously. I mean, there is no doubt about it. I don't know about you, but man, I would love to see the the best of the best in that department and then for the flexibility you should have a bloody um, export button somewhere literally on the screen saying that okay export so i'm going to export to disk because it looks like i have to do that manually and because it's so test image, select folder, it's for the test. I'm going to do DXO, uh, the low quality, not low quality, but just a minimum quality image. And underscore D prime X D. So D prime XD, which means that it's the D prime XD, the latest version of the noise reduction, followed by export. Now, generally, the export should take uh, quite a while. Now, I'm going to go back to the photo library. And then I'm going to do, let's say, 12,800. Zooming in quite a bit customize it and I'll go to the noise reduction obviously no other doubt the noise reduction will be right there and then I'll click let's say for the for fun I'll zoom in quite a bit and I'll click prime give it a little bit of time because I'm exporting an image and making the software work like no tomorrow I'm going to go to the D prime. I'm going to just do that. Let's see. And D prime XD. You know, if you are using high, if you're, uh, if you have a macro for that camera with the high resolution, uh, high ISO, you obviously want the best of the technology provided by the software company. I mean, there is no doubt about it. Unless, obviously, it's over uh, correcting all the things and it looks plasticky. And that you don't want. Now, I'm going to export that without adding anything else by file, export to disk. Now, D prime XD as well, and uh, export. Once it's done, because that's the one step done, so uh, my idea is simple. It's clearly shown that if you are using the highest uh, ISO by your camera, no matter what software you use, it's going to be difficult. So then what about if I use the next best thing, which is the 12,800, uh, which is already quite, um, you know, enormous. In that case, I would like to not abuse it too much. There you go. So in the folder, you can see that this is the, uh, what's the name? Like the metadata thing. Generally, if you save them, so you, uh, DxO will save your edits. And there you go. That's the 12,800 and 25,600. So if I open them side by side with the original 
images, raw image. Actually, I'm going to use open just one. And then on the top, I will select that and the original raw file. And then compare side by side. Ah, I forgot to add an image just to make sure that you understand exactly uh, which one is what. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. So look at the left and right. So left top left corner, that's the raw file of 12,800. And this one, right bottom, that's the original one. That's the corrected version. Also, uh, you have the original 25,600 raw on the top right corner. And the bottom left corner is the output after the correction. Now, it does look plasticky. However, I think I made a mistake. I am clearly made a mistake. I don't think I made a mistake, which is um, it doesn't show in the preview the quality of the image, quality of the noise reduction. So you actually essentially have to export it in order to see the quality of it. And I was mistaken in the screen that uh, it was not good enough. But now that I'm seeing at the low quality JPEG output, I precise the low quality JPEG. When I say low quality, it's the highest quality. However, uh, you know, you can see the resolution is not really strong. You can see that it's 1440 to uh, 1920. Um, you know, overall, it does look plasticky, but it looks pretty freaking awesome in 25,600 ISO. And that gives me hope. That gives me a lot of hope. So I'm very satisfied with the result. And if you don't like the plastic look, obviously, because it's a heavy noise reduction, then you can use other software such as um, the DX, no, Dehancer. Uh, for the, 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 the plugin that you use for the film look to add some sort of grain because when you add some grain it become it becomes image becomes generally more natural natural which for me you know I like it quite a bit now going back to the main image if I actually go to the high quality for the let's say uh, 25,600 where is it there you go that's the original one and use the high quality noise reduction high quality noise reduction just for the sake of it and then if I use the thumbnail HQ I'm just wondering if I can do something about it HQ, maybe reduce the opacity a little bit. And then if I export it, export to disk. HQ. And then export it. And I'd like to see exactly what is the outcome. So that plus, okay, I'm going to open that in the, you see, you can see, up oh, there you go, what, what, did I, what I'm doing. There 
there you go. That, and if I select the latest version and compare it side by side, you know, globally it like it looks fine, but this is this looks ultra awesome. Good quality, no sign of uh, noise reduction, weird noise reduction. However, though, you see the size of the HQ has, it has more resolution because it has more information. So when you zoom in, this image on the left-hand side gets pixelated. This one on the right has enormous amount of grain. Now that's fine if you are in the smartphone. But if you are just printing it, then generally you want higher resolution, obviously, with your noise reduction. So it comes down to, you will get a clean image. However, you probably need different kind of tools to, you know, uh, you know, upscale your image in order to have some more resolution to make it more print quality. But I'm pretty sure that you're not going to do print all the time, especially, uh, you know, the the wall size so if i look at the blur area i have images you can actually read sapiens left and right the brothers karamazov robert green my some of my french book this one obviously cannot read much on the left hand side anyway this this uh, out from the bat the dxo for left seems to be pretty easy i didn't even touch the color part so I am going back to ISO 200, we'll go to the customize, so customize, and then let's restart. From two, on the top level, you do compare side by side, or on and off, you have before and after. So before, that's the very original image. After, no, so before, after, that's the, uh, you know, all the automatic correction that applied systematically, which you can change in here, I think, in the preference, if I remember correctly, in my previous, there you go. Auto apply presets, the extra style, so it will um, add automatically the DX style. I would probably add something different probably something softer neutral color for example let's see how does it look so before and after and now it also add the automatic uh, automatic um, optics module obviously and that's the job of it anyway now you have the full look, full screen, one on one, go back to the full screen. And now when you go to the full screen, you obviously have something to add at the bottom side, uh, tagging, star, vertical split view. You can do straight from the top crop, white balance, you know, all the tools that DxO are known for. Then if you go straight to the left hand, right hand side, you have the traditional, um, traditional tools for editing, starting from the exposure, then the DxO smart lighting. Let's see what does happen. If I turn off and on, so it does the, some sort of smart lighting to get you some more dynamic range. You know, it's up to you. I'm kind of quite old school. I like to take photos already good enough from the beginning. Then selective tone. These are the preset, clear view. If I go on and off, so it kind of gives you more vibrancy, more contrast and kind of trying to get rid of haze. Contrast and micro contrast, curve. I'm a more of a curve guy than a slide guy, so I like curve, if you know what I mean, you dirty people. Then auto with DxO optics module. So if I zoom in, let's see what is happening exactly. 
Okay, so it's trying to add some sort of uh, getting rid of all the vignetting from the corner. You know, I rather like vignette. So it depends on the moment and images. If it's a landscape, that's the one thing. If it's a portrait, that's a different one. Then the color correction. Um, I'm not going to go to the details when it comes to the HSL wheel because if you've been using the HSL, generally speaking, I'll give you an idea though. I'll give you an idea just for the sake of fun of it. You take this picker, you drop it on this color. Now it picked the color from the color wheel. I'm, just for the fun, I'm going to change it completely. You see what is happening? Now, if I zoom in quite a bit, it's not, it's not fluid enough. I'm going to just get rid of my picker. It's not fluid enough. You see, it, there is no tr transition. So, when I do like that, like I try to get close to the original color, it has a nice transition from red all the way to the green. So that, and then just to have a smoother look, you can, you know, use the inside and outside of this wheel to have a nicer transition. For example, I'm gonna show you it again. So I put it all the way there so that slight move will have a nice transition from red to yellow to green. So I'm going to do a slight move, very slight. Now it's doing a global change to every single red you see in the image. Now, if I remember correctly, you can do the whole thing locally, just on this apple. Right now it's using the whole image. So that for another video. But at least you get the idea is that HSL generally help you do the color correction of the particular color. Then it a new version, if I remember, allow you to uh, add LUT. So. You have the preset of all kind of LUT. You have the premium. I'm not really a big fan of it though. No, they're good, huh? but I don't really am a big fan of LUT, generally speaking. You know, in my opinion, if somebody is giving you a LUT, I would prefer it comes with the adding able to add grains because grain is the one that gives your image you know a better look in terms of kind of like a natural look. And you can clearly see that uh, you have the option to use the um, the color checker to have the most original color available. For that, imagine that you have a color checker next to you, and then you can actually use that color checker to uh, you know, have the most accurate color possible, which is very important for uh, the photography in terms of landscape, generally uh, product photography or portrait photography or any kinds of commercial works. And those who are um, you know, aware of, familiar with um, Color One, Capture One, sorry, or Adobe, generally this is the, one of the most obvious tool in terms of professional photography, because without that, it's kind of scary. White balance doesn't do much of a job. White balance, you know, it's okay. It does the 90%, but to be absolutely sure, you can, you have to use the color checker. Then create profile generally, you probably have to, you can do your color grading and then you can just click it and it will create a, uh, create a profile for you. And then you can save it there. There you go. But I will leave that to the professional photographer who is going to show you in a different YouTube videos um, 
how to use that one because I'm not a color checker guy and I don't really care. I prefer, I'm a hobbyist, so I leave that to the professional. I'm not going to pretend like I know what's what. But at least you have that option. Then you obviously have the other option in terms of uh, noise reduction, lens correction, the sharpness. Then you have the distortion correction. I think you can automatically correct the, uh, the perspective. Yeah, you can. So you can see that it's the before, the horizon is not straight enough. Now it did the automatic correction with the cost of losing some of your image. So that's the perspective correction. What is the horizon? So if I turn on both, what does it happen? You know, you have the perfectly symmetric image ever. Everything at the background and at the foreground, they look all straight. And finally, which I did, you can add watermarking, whatever it is. You, if you have a logo of your own, you can add it or you can just add a text, which I did earlier. Finally, the local correction. Obviously, I mean, if I'm not, if I am doing a YouTube video on a software, I got to show you how this thing works. So generally speaking, you select this thing. <clears throat> And then, I have to, like, idea is that I should be able to use or find my tool whenever I need. In that case, I'm in the local correction, right? Local, in the local correction, local adjustment, sorry, which is uh, basically the same. Now I should be able to just find my tools whenever I want. So there you go. You have the control point, the famous control point. You have the control line. You have the graduate filter. You have the, um, the filter that you locally use, the DxO film, film pack. You have the auto mask. Depends how it works. We're going to see it later. You have the traditional brush and you have the eraser. Let's see. I'm going to use the auto brush. I'm gonna zoom in and I want just this apple because you have the other red. So, if I select the whole thing, then what? Do I suppose to, so I suppose to click this thing? I don't know. So I'm still trying to figure it out. So I masked it. I can see the mask. If I click it again, you don't see the mask anymore. Okay, that's fine. Now I see the masks, but I don't see the apple anymore. So how do I know? What is the strength of my apple? See if I Turn on the exposure. Oh, there you go. So when you change it, you can actually see the change. But after that, it kind of goes behind the mask. But I want to, I don't want to see the mask while I'm changing it. So I'm kind of bothered by it though. Maybe if I reduce the opacity and then Ah, so if I go like that, no, it doesn't work. That, that kind of shame. So basically, I have to have the mask on while I'm doing changes. Good thing is that I can see my changes, what is happening. But the moment I relieve my curve, the, the cursor, it's the mask is coming back. That I don't like. Biff. So, not a big fan. Probably I have to go back to the good old, good old uh, control panel. I fix it.
then I can see the I'm gonna turn off turn on exposure. So you see the automax seems to be blah, not the most amazing one at this very super quick test. And if you remember correctly, the DXO kind of allow you to use the mask. Uh, the you know fine tune the mask that's what I mean to say fine tune the mask which I'm trying to find out exactly where because it's been a while that I use the DXO but generally you can you know uh, change the mask based on color for example you raise the mask now either you can use it on the Luma or chroma. Chroma means color, luma means luminosity. Then you have the rest of the tools available, including HSL. Hey, hey, hey! Haha! <laughs> so if I go back to the original one, select my uh, control point on the Apple. Do you like Apple? I do. Then I can actually click the question mark and see if I have the mask selectivity. Now what is bothering me though, I don't see my max, I mean I don't see how to see the mask, the black and white. For example, you're supposed to be able to see the black and white part of the mask. I don't see it. And that's bothering me a lot. Anyway, uh, now let's get back to the fun part. So if I now go all the way to the green, you see, now it's changing the color of the apple without changing the whole image. But what I, again, I don't want to see the mask because it's showing me the mask. So if I go back to the different module, will it show, continue to show the mask? Yeah, still showing the mask, you see? Still showing the mask. I don't see, I don't want the mask, god damn it. Why showing me the mask? Is there anyone can tell me how to get rid of this mask so that I can actually see the image without this round thing. How can I make it disappear? If I go back to the local correction, and then, no, I don't really, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. So at this point, I cannot show you anything because I don't know how to get rid of this mask, which I mean, I want to have the effect without the round uh, control point thing. Because, I don't know, maybe here? Hang on a second. Color overlay. Black and white. So in the, there you go, that's the black and white where you can actually see the, where your mask is been applied, which is actually very amazing tool. Now, if I go back to the local adjustment, you see the chroma <clears throat> means that it's going to affect on everywhere. Or if you go more towards hundred, it will be pinpointing exactly on this color, which is wait a second, it's coming on this red yellow thing. Now, there you go, show mask, hide mask. Finally, I found it, I found it. So it's basically on top of it, but not very visible on the left, uh, top left corner, just to let you know. So you have to click it and it will come in. Anyway, this is overall uh, the DxO PhotoLev video. It seems to be pretty easy. 
Certain things takes time to figure it out, but generally if you give enough time, it has tool that uh, will very surprise you very, very much. Especially the noise reduction. At the very beginning, I was very uh, stupid about uh, prejudging it because it was not showing enough uh, the preview. And based on the preview, I actually judged the quality of the latest version of the DxO Photo Lab. But judging by the current situation and the images that I'm seeing now, clearly I have been, uh, I'm mistaken. You can see that the quality at, I remind you, this is a micro four third camera, very old one. And the quality of it, it's just phenomenal. Obviously you can see some artifacts right there. But if you do a little bit of color correction and then add some grain on top of it, which I'm going to show you in a future video, uh, it will go much better. For example, the HQ seems reasonable to me still. However, I would prefer the previous quality and some gain on it. So overall, the first impression of the DxO PhotoLab uh, 7, to be honest with you, very fast, very quick. Uh, has some uh, side drawbacks, but they are very, very, very acceptable. Now remember, before I leave, to go wrong in one's own way is better than to go right in someone else's.